Mr. President and gentlemen of the Board of Directors and citizens, one third of the population of the South is of the Negro race. No enterprise seeking the material, civil, or moral welfare of this section can disregard this element of our population and reach the highest success. I will convey to you, Mr. President and Directors, the sentiment of the masses of my race when I say that in no way have the value and manhood of the American Negro been more fittingly and generously recognized than by the managers of this magnificent exposition at every stage of its progress. It is a recognition that will do more to cement the friendship of the two races than any occurrence since the dawn of our freedom. Now, not only this, but the opportunity here afforded will awaken among us a new era of industrial progress. Ignorant and inexperienced, it is not strange that in the first years of our new life, we began at the top instead of the bottom, that a seat in Congress or the state legislature was more sought than real estate or industrial skill, that the political convention or some speaking had more attraction than starting a dairy farm or a truck guard. A ship lost at sea for many days suddenly sighted a friendly vessel. From the mast of the unfortunate vessel was seen a signal, water, water, we die up third. The answer from the friendly vessel at once came back, cast down your bucket where you are. A second time, the signal, water, send us water, ran up from the distressed vessel and was answered, cast down your bucket where you are. A third and fourth signal for water was answered. Cast down your bucket where you are. The captain of the distressed vessel at last, heeding the injunction, cast down his bucket, and it came up full of fresh, sparkling water from the mouth of the Amazon River. For those of my race who depend on bettering their condition in a foreign land, or who underestimate the importance of cultivating friend relations with the southern white man, who is their next-door neighbor, I would say, cast down your bucket where you are. Cast it down in making friends in every manly way of the people of all races by whom you are surrounded. To those of the white race who look to the incoming of those of foreign birth, trained tongue and habits for the prosperity of the South, were I permitted, I would repeat what I have said to my own race. Cast down your bucket where you are. Cast it down among the eight millions of Negroes whose habits you know, whose fidelity and love you have tested in days when you have proved treacherous than the ruin of your fireside. Cast down your bucket among these people who have without strikes and labor wars killed your people, cleared your forests, filled in your railroads and cities, brought forth treasures from the bowels of the earth to help to make possible this magnificent representation of the progress of the South.
that seems to slip a cog and go, a just a rattling down creation, a like an ocean's overflow. When the world just starts a spinning, a like a picking in his top, and your cup of joy seems brimming till it seems about to slop. And you feel just like a racer that is training for the trot. When your mammy says the blessing and the cone, cone hot. Or when you sit down at the table, a kind of weary like and sad. And you feel a little tired and perhaps a little mad. How your gloom turns into gladness. How your joy drives out the doubt when that oven door is open and the smell comes pouring out. Why, the electric light of heaven seems to settle on the spot when your mammy says the blessing and the cold, cold hot. And the cabbage pot is steaming. And the bacon's good and fat. And the chitlins are sputtering just to show you where it is at. Take away your soda biscuit. Take away your cake and pie. For the glory time is coming. And it's approaching mighty nigh. And you'd like to jump in holler. But you know you better not. When your mammy says the blessing and the cone holds hot. Oh, I've heard a sermon, and I've heard a lots of prayers, and I've listened to some singing that has took me up the stairs out of glory land and set me just beneath the master's throne and left my heart a beating in a happy aftertone. Uh, but the words so sweetly murmured I seem to touch the softest spot when my mammy says the blessing and the cone, cone, hot. If there's anything that riles me and makes me take a hitch till I want to take my coat off and just rar, tar, pitch, it's to see some ignorant white man mitten that audacious sin when he wants to cook the possum, taking off the possum's skin. Now, it ain't no use in talking. It just riles me to the heart for to see them foolish poisons throwing away the bestest part. Why, possum's skin is just as tender and as juicy as can be. Why he knows all about the critter hiding heart? Don't talk to me. Why, possum skin is just like shoat skin. Just you swinge and scope him down, take a good sharp knife and score him, then you roast him good and brown. Ha <laughs> ha, honey. Why, your torts are most a sin when you sit down to the table to that possum's crackling skin. Now, white folks thinks they knows about cooking, and I reckon that they do have a little idea about a middling dish or two, but there ain't a thing they knows of that I reckon can't be beat when you sit down to the table to an unscunned possum's meat. <laughs> Thank you.